Thanks, mate. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Um, we do have uh, a focus on a nickel cobalt project. We've also got a very interesting gold project, which I'll, I'll touch on. Um, go to the next slide. So we'll start here. So most people don't know Canada and the projects all that well in the, in the region, but um, we're in Ontario. We're about 40 kilometers south of Timmins, which is a major mining gold hub. Um, we're on the Cadillac Larder Fault. You can see our project there is called Edelston. To give you some, some more context, that belt that we're on is a highly prolific gold belt. There's a project called um, Kote, which is owned by IM Gold and Sumitomo, which is about 50 Ks to the west of us. And that's that's 20 million ounces. You know, you go right next to us, Young and Davison, 5 million, Kirkland, Macasa, all these monster deposits, 20 million ounces of Valdor. But not only that, if you go south to Sudbury, 150 kilometers south of us is is basically with the largest, I think they produce 50% of the world's nickel for a hundred years. So it's not just gold in the region, it's actually a large nickel producer as well. But um, the reason why we went there originally is I was basically one of the guys behind Bellevue Gold. And I bought this project because of some of the gold hits that, um, that they had at Edelston. And I mean, we'll go into a bit of detail. We have, uh, we we're drilling for gold, we hit nickel. And um, you see on the right hand side where it goes into detail, we've got a billion tons of nickel cobalt at 0.3% um, equivalent. We've also got a one and a half million ounces of gold at a gram uh, just north of it. Next slide. So Dale Ginn is the MD, Rob Jusen, Executive Corporate Director, myself. Um, without going into too much detail, this team will evolve. Uh, this is an exploration company um, and still is an exploration company to a certain extent. However, it will evolve into studies and development and operations and that sort of path. So um, this team will change over the, the coming months, I suspect. Next page. Now, a billion tons of 0.3 nickel is, is relevant. Relevant for a number of reasons, but um, the world is going down the path of EVs and the US government does have an inflation act. Um, they're allocating $500 billion to climate change and uh, trend energy, green energy transition um, investments. And clearly the raw material supply chain is at the start of that. So, it's, there's a huge push in North America and last night with the European Union um, coming out with their Mineral Act. So you can see where a lot of the funding to develop these assets is, is, is going to come from. Next page. More of the same, just talking about the Canadian interests, the Canadian governments are also funding these projects. Next page. Now this is a deposit. So reason why I bought this originally was up where we've had Edelston, where that red zone is, where, where the gold outline of the deposit is, um, up against the contact between the um, the nickel, the ultramorphic, there was a hit from memory, and you'll have to go back and check this, but um, I think they had like five meters of 50 grams from 110 meters, and then there was a step back, which hit three meters at 50 grams, and then we drilled a hole, it was, um, down to a depth of about 600 meters and we hit three at 35. So I was basically making some correlation to the um, some of the hits that we we're getting at Bellevue. And then if you went east of that, we were getting 100 meters at 0.1 gram, 150 at 0.8 grams. So you're getting this high grade hanging wall, but you also have this big low grade disseminated body to the, um, to the west of it in that red zone. Now, we started our program and we drilled a hole to the east of that, a couple hundred meters east. And um, we hit a meter at two kilos from about 320 meters. And we drilled holes around it and we're getting sulfides all the way through the hole. It was really exciting. Um, however, we got the results back and there was no gold and it. it was all just nickel sulfides. So we're like, what have we got here? Firstly, I was disappointed because I thought I had a monster gold deposit. Um, however, didn't turn out to be exactly how I'd um, envisaged the exploration to go, but we um, did some homework, realized we had a nickel ore body here, and we started drilling down the south where we call Bardwell. 
Now, Bardwell came back with it was 160 meters of 0.52 nickel. Um, but the first question you ask yourself for these lower grade disseminated nickel ore bodies is, is it in silicates? Is it in sulfides? Is, is it in alloys? Now, if it's in sil silicates and alloys, it's a much harder to process if possible at all. Um, so the first question was, is it actually nickel sulfide? Now, when you're assaying for nickel sulfide or nickel in general, you um, there's two stages. There's a first step is the hydrochloric acid leach to get the assay. And the st second stage is the hydrofluoric. Now, hydrochloric basically re releases the um, nickel in sulfides. Hydrofluoric basically breaks down the marker, the silicates and alloys. So you know what's in, what's in silicates. And we were getting an average of about 93% of the nickel liberating in the hydrochloric acid leach. So we're very confident that it was actually nickel sulfides. And there's a number of reasons why that's the case. And we'll go into it if anyone's got any questions, but that's, um, that's, that's the fact. Now, we'll go back onto the gold a little bit, but um, next page, next page, thanks. The billion tons is the inferred and indicated resource there. The, the purple um, host you see, that's uh, defined by the um, magnetics. And the magnetics effectively almost perfectly correlate with the mineralization. So clearly there's a lot more to find um, if we're looking to explore it, but a billion tons is, is more than enough. So the next steps is actually just more defining about them, where we're gonna start mining. Next page. Here are a bunch of drill holes. Um, Bardwell is probably where we're gonna start in terms of the more detailed work of a study. And you can see some of the numbers there. Um, you know, 285 meters of 0.43, 144 at 0.38, um, and it continues. Next page. Now, network, which is the key question for a project like this. So early on, we're like, does this actually produce a concentrate? So we took a couple of holes, um, worked with the guys at Glencore, XPS, that did the network for us. We sent samples to Sudbury. This is, this is just first pass initial network. Um, it was a really coarse grind of 120 microns and 70% of it was recovering to the rougher. These concentrates are easily saleable. Um, it's what they use in the smelters uh, at Sudbury. So we're confident that we're actually going to be able to produce something that it's going to float quite easily. This is not a chemistry set. This is literally crush, grind, rougher concentrate, three stages of cleaner, and that's what you produce. Now, it hasn't been optimized, haven't, doesn't have a closed circuit test work just yet. Um, but yeah, this is uh, incredibly encouraging to start with. Next page. Uh, the deposit, there's, it goes for six kilometers long. There's a regional fault that effectively crosses it, which is why it's not silicates. The actual fault is um, the technical term for the geologists keep telling me is um, it's been completely serpentinized which turns a dunite into almost a talc. Um, so the nickel that was in silicates has been liberated. Um, and that's why it's in nickel sulfides. The nickel that was liberated from the silicates has uh, attached itself to the sulfur that was, um, that's come up with the fluids. So the closer you are to the fault, the higher the sulfur content and the better the recoveries are gonna be. Next slide. And you can see, this is what it looks like those little blebs, it's really high tenor nickel. So it's pentlandite, obviously. Um, Hazelwoodite, villarite, and millerite are the key minerals, nickel minerals. Now they're like really high tenor. If you go and do some homework, you'll understand um, as to the concentration of nickel versus um, pentlandite and other nickel minerals. But yeah, where we are in the world, where this ore body is highly strategic. Next slide. Actually, before I go into this, before I go into the gold, maybe I'm, one of the slides that was actually, that I thought it was in this presentation is, um, is if you go to our, and this is a bit of homework, if you go to our um, actual announcement on the resource calculation for the nickel, page 12 
the resource calculator, the independent consultant firm that actually does a calculation of the resource, they, they do a basic model. And one of the questions I always get, which I'm sure is going to come up at some point, is you know, 0.3 nickel is, is incredibly low grade nickel. Like, you know what? It is. But this is not like a Cambalda style vein hosted three meter wide ore body. This is hundreds of meters wide. This is more like a porphyry deposit. Now, 0.3 nickel, if you calculate it, if you back calculate it, it works out to about 0.9 copper equivalent. And 0.9 copper equivalent, if you go back and reassess this, if it was a billion tons of 0.9 copper, open cut, 40 kilometers from Timmins, a major mining hub, um, yeah, the, the company's valuation would be significantly higher than where it is. Now, it is nickel, it is 0.3. But if you go to page 12 on that release, the consulting firm, they actually do the a basic kind of model that they have to do. And it's very, very simplified. It's it's a lot more complicated this when it goes to a feasibility study and goes through the process. However, basic numbers were the mining cost would be four dollars, processing cost of six dollars, GNA two bucks, and selling cost of a dollar. Now that's per ton of ore. So it works out to about $13 a ton to produce. Now, you can go and take 0.3 nickel, multiply it by the nickel price, multiply it by 70% recovery, and you can calculate that there's a significant margin between what our costs are per tonne of ore to what the value of the rock is per tonne of ore. And then really, it's up to you what size mine you, you want to estimate putting on the top of this thing to actually understand what it's worth. Now, very simply put, a billion tons is a lot of lot of ore. This is a large, basically the way to think about it, it's a large porphyry nickel deposit. Um, and if you back calculate that, then you know the MPV is really up to you as to how much capex you want to put in. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, 10, 20, 40 million ton per annum plant on something like this is going to be expensive. So it's not a small exercise, it's a very large capex. It's not for um it's not a small asset. It's not a small project. So, however, when you put the numbers and you understand how much nickel that actually produces and how relevant that is to the world, then it's, um, it's, it's quite important. Now, quickly touching on the gold, we've got one and a half million ounces of gold already there. As you can see, Edelston is which the reason why I bought it. That little section in the middle of the um, central zone, we hit a meter at two kilos, which we need to understand why it's there. Um, we then drilled quite a number of holes in Sorolla and Effectively, we've hit almost 12 parallel loads there, and they order, almost always perfectly hit the, um, we always perfectly hit it when we're drilling the, the, the core drilling there. Now, if you look at the diagram just below that, the deepest hole we hit, we targeted, we hit it at 900 meters or something. But um, those IP model, it looks like it continues towards the east. There's a little gap in it. But that was just where they didn't do the IP originally. Um, we announced this morning that we we're doing step out holes and you know that 700 800 meter zone already is almost 900,000 ounces as it, as it is in inferred we're doing two kilometers of step out now um it's gonna be really interesting to see what that comes up with and we're in you know elephant country for gold so yeah fingers crossed we might have a monster gold deposit as well Thanks, Tolga. You got time for some questions? Yeah, let's go. Hey, um, so what, what do you commercialize first? Is it, is it the gold? Um, oh, tough one. So really, the, the, the key steps for us going from here is it's a big asset, right? It needs lots of money. It's not a small project. It also needs a team. So the next kind of steps for us is is bringing in a board and management team that actually have experience in doing these things. So that's probably the next step. Now, I think that this particular group that we're um, that I'm hoping to get or working towards uh, is going to focus on the nickel. However, you know, if we drill out those holes and it all comes in, you're looking at a very, very large sizable gold deposit. I mean, it's going to be of interest to majors. It's going to be of interest to the management team that comes in and works with this. Um, but what's more relevant in the world, in my perspective, and what I've spent my life doing is battery minerals. Um, so nickel and cobalt 
you know, of the scale that we're talking, it's talking the size of Sudbury. So I think that'll be the key focus. Sport for choice. Um, Offtake partners, is it too early days to kind of raise that question? Um, there are quite a number of people in the data room, um, from the Koreans, the Australians, to the Swede, like all over the world. Everyone's interested in this because the scale that we're talking, you don't find large nickel sulfide deposits like this. Um, you know, usual, a good producer is 20,000 tonnes. I mean, IGO is a major nickel producer in Australia and they do 25,000 tonnes. You can, you know, depending on what capex you put on this, um, it has the capacity to do something significantly more. Um, again, not without its risk, not without requiring capital, but yeah, the potential's there. I mean, how, how big is that um, your nickel project on a global perspective and, and you know, how could it be mined compared to others? So how big scale, could it be? Like, let's do a, yeah. do a hypothetical. Um, yeah. Let's say you gave a billion tons, 30, 40 year mine life. That's that's like a 30 million ton per annum plant. Um, you can do the back of the envelope calculation. You multiply it out by 0.3 nickel, so by 70% recovery, you're one of the top five nickel sulfide mines in the world. And this is not from laterites. This is class one nickel. It's from silicates. Yep. I mean, from sulfide, sorry. So it's relevant. And it's material in terms of production, especially with what's coming with um, electric vehicles. This is clearly going to attract a lot of the interest from all the interested parties in that space, and not just the um, the producers, but also the OEMs and everybody. I mean, like I said, you're very well positioned. What what are the kind of next milestones over the next uh, six to twelve months? Um, firstly, it'll be the management team, um, and I'm and I'm not wedded to that just yet because we've got a whole bunch of groups looking to do work on us right now and doing work on us right now. So it really depends on um, what kind of proposals that come forward. But um, it's lucky we've got the cards in our pocket, basically. So you're looking to bring in a whole new management team? Is that, is that the play uh, and you step away from that? Uh, I would, I'm would. i not going to step away. I'm a larger shareholder. So yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And, um, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, I've, I've had a fair bit of success um, with, with regards to battery and minerals. And I, yeah, I wouldn't be leaving. It's just that um, the, the evolution of a company like this changes. You know, you go from being an explorer with geologists running the business um, to then running an executive team that's going to run studies and you know financing having a cfo that's you know going to raise a significant amount of money um whether it be from oems or through, through government so it's a different skill set and different beast so the company of company like this always evolves and we're at the stage where you know we've got a billion tons of nickel sulfide in the right jurisdiction in an open cut pit that's got you know five cents a kilowatt hydropower it's it's going to it's going to evolve Tiger, thank you for your time. That's all we have time for. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thanks, guys.